Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm sorry, it's been a while since I posted a video. I've been very busy in the past month. My wife and I have been traveling to a lot of different places and I've been spending my extra time trying to keep the wholesale business running smoothly and efficiently. So I haven't had a whole lot of time for videos, so I apologize for that, but going forward, I'm gonna try and get back on a good schedule for you. Now today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use QuickBooks and A2X to manage the numbers in your business. This is an important video and I know a lot of you have requested it, so hopefully you'll find this very helpful. Now, I'm gonna start off with showing you how to set up QuickBooks, how to classify expenses, get your cards and your bank accounts set up, and then I'm gonna show you how to use A2X to pull the information from the settlement statement that you get every two weeks from Amazon when you get paid and make sense of that detail uh, in A2X and have it pushed automatically to QuickBooks so that you are getting everything recorded accurately. Now, I'm gonna have different sections in the description below, so if you already know how to do some of these things, you can skip ahead and not waste your time watching the entire video. Uh, I know it can be very frustrating if you, there's just a certain piece of information you want to have to sit and wait, so I don't want you to do that. Go ahead and look below. Now, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. This is a place where we talk everything Amazon wholesale related, strategy on how to scale a business from zero to $100,000 in sales plus per month pretty quickly. Go ahead also join the Facebook group below. We have a great community. There's a free course there if you're new and you need to get up to speed. So take advantage of that. And without further ado, for right now, let's go ahead and get right into this video. All right, guys, here we are inside of QuickBooks, and I'm gonna try and make this as organized as possible. So we're gonna start with QuickBooks. Once I go through a few setup items, we're then gonna go and look at A2X, how to connect that to Amazon, and then how to connect that to QuickBooks. And we'll then go from there, and I will show you how to run reports like your income statement, your balance sheet using QuickBooks. So let's go ahead and start. We're at the dashboard right now. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go over to transactions and banking, okay? This is going to be where you're going to link your credit cards and your bank account to QuickBooks so that all the deposits from Amazon and all the expenses that you're charging in regards to your Amazon business are being captured inside of QuickBooks. So the goal here is to classify all of those expenses, all of those deposits, and basically all the transactions that come through. Now the beauty of QuickBooks is that once you classify it, you can create rules so that you don't have to keep doing all this um, grunt work to get your finances in order on QuickBooks. So um, real quick, we're just gonna look at one or two of my accounts here and I'm, I'm gonna show you a few things now. Uh, when you are classifying things, you, you want to make sure you are putting stuff in the right account, right? There's assets, liabilities, and equity on the balance sheet. And then on the income statement, you have your revenue and your expenses. And obviously, once you subtract the expenses from the revenue, you have profit. Now, there's going to be no profit accounts, just for those of you who don't have an accounting backwards, just so you know. Um, its profit is kind of deducted by the information of <laughs> sales and expenses. So uh, you wanna make sure you are properly classifying everything. Okay, so for instance, if you're buying poly bags, that's not inventory, that is an expense. That's something that is gonna go on your income statement. Um, if you are paying for rent, that is an expense as well. That is not going to go on your balance sheet. It's not an asset. It's not a liability. It's, um, it is an expense. Now, if you signed an agreement that you are going to pay rent, say, for an entire year and you owed that rent right now, right, but you haven't paid it yet, you could book what's called an accrual and we're not really gonna get into accrual accounting because that's a whole different animal. Here we're doing what's called cash basis acc accounting, right? So the only time there's a liability is if it's a credit card or something where you have actually borrowed money and you are using that for your business to pay for things. So we're doing cash basis accounting here. 
Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down and when we've identified uh, all of our expenses, uh, we are going to select the accounts that we want them to go to, okay? Now, if you want a good idea of what accounts are um, related to the income statement or balance sheet, you could come over here to the chart of accounts, right? And just take a look at the chart of accounts. Now, right away, we know that everything here that is an asset, uh, inventory, uh, fixed assets, uh, the credit card's gonna be your liabilities, um, and then you have other current liabilities and equity. So the way that this is designed is um, on QuickBooks, it's organized so that first things, the first accounts you're gonna be seeing are assets, the second is gonna be liabilities, and the last are your equity. Okay, and then after that, you're gonna have your revenue accounts, all right, for your income statement, so that's, um, that's right here. And then you're gonna have your cost of sales or cost of goods sold account, and, and that follows next. And then after that, you'll have all of your other miscellaneous expenses, right? Um, so we're gonna go back then to the um, banking tab, and we're gonna look at how to classify different um, items in the right place. Now, let's just pretend that Home Depot was a supplier that I was buying inventory from, right? Well, the way that I like to set up my chart of accounts is in the inventory account, I like all of my suppliers to roll up in there. In other words, I like to create a lot of sub accounts under inventory and the name of each sub account is going to be that of my supplier. Um, the more information, the more detail I can put in there, the better organized I'm gonna be, the better I'm gonna be able to make good decisions when I look at reports like the balance sheet or the income statement, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that this Home Depot is a supplier, right? And obviously, in all reality, it's not a supplier, it's just somewhere where I go and I buy things like pallet wrap and sometimes boxes. So we're gonna pretend though, once again, not to keep being repetitive, that this is where I've bought say a bunch of stuff that I'm gonna sell, right? So inventory. Well, what I'm gonna do is, if this is a new supplier, I would come over here and I would scroll up to the top and I would click add new, right? Because I'm going to add a new supplier to my inventory account. And what I'm going to do is in the account type is I'm gonna select the drop down arrow and I'm going to go to other current assets. Now, if you're not aware, there are two types of assets. There's current assets and there's long-term assets. A current asset is something that is going to last less than a year. That's the textbook definition. So something that's gonna become liquid uh, to cash in less than a year. So uh, a lot of times stocks that you plan on selling within the year um, or it's something that you can liquidate to cash very quickly, you're, you're going to have that as a current asset. So inventory is a current asset. Now an example of a long-term asset would be a building, right? Most likely that building is going to be sitting around for more than a year and therefore it will be a long-term asset for you and you will depreciate it, okay? And we are not gonna go into an, you know, all the accounting rules on depreciation here, but just know there's a difference between long-term and short-term assets and inventory, cash, um, short-term receivables, stuff that uh, you're due to receive within a year. Those are all short-term assets, so current assets. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna select other current assets because this is an inventory account and we're gonna go to the inventory as our detail type. We're gonna name this Home Depot, right? Because we're pretending that that's a supplier where we're buying inventory from. Is this a sub account? Yes, it is because we want sub accounts for inventory, remember? So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just type in here inventory and I'm gonna blur out my other suppliers and this will be a sub account to inventory. And then what I will do is I will classify, I'll hit add right here. Okay, so I will then check mark this and check mark the other Home Depot and I'll hit accept and those will be classified on the balance sheet as inventory. Now. I'm not actually going to do that right now because uh, that's not the right place for it. In fact, the right place for this is um, an expense account. Now, I have a uh, account called Prepping Supplies, okay? And it's a cost of goods sold account. Now, let me explain cost of goods sold. 
um, you're gonna have the cost of goods sold. There's two types. There's the a type that's a direct cost of good cost of sales, and then there's indirect. Indirect would be things such as poly bags, labels, boxes, um, stuff that you have to have in order to get the product in position for sale. Uh, the direct cost of sales would be the actual physical cost of the product. Okay. Um, so here, this is just a cost of sales account. It's not inventory. It's not inventory that I've sold. It's just stuff that I am preparing. I have to get that I have to use to get the inventory into position for sale. So here, uh, let's just, I, I think from Home Depot, I had bought stretch wrap. And so I would then classify this as stretch wrap and that would go to my income statement as a cost of sales expense, okay? So hopefully you're following me. So basically what you're gonna do is once you've um, added your bank account and your credit cards, you're gonna be going through and classifying everything, okay? You're gonna classify all the expenses, all the liabilities, all the um, assets, and, and some of this is gonna be equity as well. Um, if, for instance, you are taking money out of the business and spending it on yourself, well, that is going to go into an equity account, right? Because you're taking equity out of the business. Um, and so you would classify it as such. So as you go through and classify, you want to make sure that the balance from your credit card company matches the balance in QuickBooks. You can see right here, mine does not because I still have three transactions to classify. Now, once I classify these transactions, they should match. If they don't, then I need to book a plug journal entry to make sure it's reconciled, or I need to, I need to investigate why there's a discrepancy there. And once I figure it out, uh, I have to fix it with a journal entry. And I'm not gonna show you how to do that here because it's most likely you're not going to have that issue. So here's an example of a account that is in balance, right? So my QuickBooks balance matches my bank balance. So there you have it. That is how you set up your cards and your bank accounts and you begin classifying expenses. Now the next thing we're gonna look at is A2X because when you get deposits from Amazon, there's a lot of information that is inside of those deposits that you don't really have available to you easily and A2X makes it easy. So let's say I get a $100,000 deposit from Amazon. That deposit is not just sales. That deposit consists of sales. It consists of um, Amazon fees. It consists of cost of sales. It consists of um, shipping. It consists of returns and it consists of um, reimbursements. So. In order to get the right information onto your income statement, all those things we just discussed, you have to have A2X pull that detail from Amazon and feed it into QuickBooks. So let's go real quick over to A2X and I'm gonna show you how to set this up. All right, so here we are over at A2X and the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to set up once you are in A2X and you've paid for the service is you wanna come over to the costs tab at the top and you wanna upload all of the costs for every single piece of inventory that you sell. Now, I'm obviously gonna blur out mine here uh, because I don't wanna share with you what I'm selling, but what you're gonna do uh, to make things very easy on yourself, assuming that you're using Fetcher, is you're gonna come over here to the Advanced Cost tab, okay? And you are going to select Download the Blank Template for uploading the cost because you don't want to do this one by one especially if you have thousands of different listings that you've sold on like i do you want to take the work you've already done in fetcher and simply transfer that over now the way you're going to do that is by downloading this template and then you're simply going to just take download the costs out of fetcher which you can do uh, if you need me to i can show you how to do that um, you're going to download all the costs that you've uploaded into Fetcher, into Excel, and you're simply going to put those into this template and then upload this template into A2X. That way you save yourself some time. Once your costs are uploaded, well, you're going to want to set some things up. Uh, you're going to want to make sure your accounts 
are set up. Uh, these accounts are the ones that are associated with your QuickBooks account. So when you go ahead and send over your settlements each month from Amazon uh, using A2X and you're sending them to QuickBooks, this is how A2X is going to match the titles in the Amazon settlement statement with the accounts inside of QuickBooks. Okay, so these are the different line items that you're gonna see getting hit by the um, different fees, um, whether you're getting the pick and pack fee or whether you're getting uh, refunds or whether it's a sales uh, account. That These are all the accounts that are gonna be in QuickBooks, okay? So once you've set all of that up, you're gonna then need to go over and make sure that all of your settlements are available. So initially, not all of your settlements are gonna be showing on the screen. So you're gonna to need to go over to your seller account on amazon.com and I'm gonna show you real quick how you can make these available so that they can be pulled into A2X. All right, so once you're inside your Amazon seller account, you're gonna to wanna to go over to reports and you're gonna go down to the payments tab here and we're gonna go over and select all statements, okay? Now, what we're gonna try and look for is whether these are all available for download. If you see that these reports are not available for download, in other words, they don't have the downloadable link here into Excel or the flat file V2, um, then you're gonna need to go ahead and select request report, and you're gonna have to do that for every single one of your archive reports that has not been downloaded or is not available for download. That way A2X can come into your Amazon account and get access to that report for summary to send over to QuickBooks. Once you've made all of your settlement statements downloadable in Amazon, you should be able to come over to A2X and see every single one of them there. If not, then there's a problem. Now, once you've affirmed that your settlement statements are all displaying in A2X, make sure that the taxes, accounts, and cost buttons here are all blue. If they are, you're gonna wanna hit sent. Now, you don't wanna hit sent if it's blue because that means it's already been sent to QuickBooks. So here's an example of uh, a settlement that I have not yet sent over to QuickBooks. The sent button's red, and I'm simply gonna hit send to QuickBooks. Now that is gonna send over all that information to QuickBooks in a very summarized way, which will help me when I run my income statement report and my balance sheet report. Now we're gonna go back over to QuickBooks and I'm gonna show you how to run an income statement and a balance sheet report. So let's do that real quick. So in order to run the profit and loss statement and the balance sheet inside of QuickBooks, you're just gonna come over to the reports section and you will click on the balance sheet tab here. If you wanna uh, run the balance sheet, click on the balance sheet report. And uh, you can put in the time frame that you want, uh, the accounting method. Once again, we're using the cash method, not the accrual. Uh, so if you do year to date, there you have it. Typically, when you're looking at the balance sheet, you want to look at the um, the entire life of your business. That way you can get an idea of where you are at today. So that's what I would recommend on the balance sheet. You just hit run report right here, and that's how you do it. It's as simple as that. It's just a click of a button. Uh, to run the profit and loss statement, basically it's the same thing, except you're going to select the profit and loss here. You're gonna go up here once again, put in the time frames that you're looking for and hit run report and you'll have your profit and loss statement. Now, depending on how well you set up your chart of accounts, how detailed you are, your profit and loss statement will, will have a lot of meaning or it will be very broad and you'll have to dig into accounts to see exactly what they are. This is why I recommend when you are setting up your chart of accounts, and you're classifying your expenses, you're as detailed as possible. That way, when you go back to make decisions about your business, you could be making well-informed decisions. So there you have it. This is how you use QuickBooks and A2X to automate the finances in your, or the accounting in your Amazon business. Uh, hopefully this video was helpful for you. I know it's a long one. This is a boring topic. This is definitely not a video that I was excited to make, so 
Hopefully it wasn't too boring for you, but needless to say, this is important stuff. So we'll see you guys in the next video. And once again, like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. All right, see you next time.